Good morning, folks. The current solar uptick began as Mercury conjoined the Sun. Well, last night, Venus capped off the conjunctions just above our star, and the largest solar flare of the uptick rang out from our same active region. We caught it in the act, saw the breadth of the radio blackout. The flare event peaked just over X3 class, but just like the previous eruptions, produced no significant CME. This lack of ejecta with such a large flare really says something about the weakening of our sun on its way to another grand minimum soon. The big sunspot itself, the biggest of this solar cycle, is turning away from Earth now, still maintaining one major delta class zone and a few other delta candidates around it. Incoming groups look far less impressive. Solar wind speed in yellow calmed a bit the last few hours and that may be the near-term end to magnetic instability at our planet. Other top solar watches include this thin dark rope of plasma, a plasma filament could erupt any time. We have two smaller ropes down south at the arrows with the larger dark patch below is the incoming negative southern coronal hole. Now for something fascinating. Astronomy Live YouTube channel posted this video during the eclipse. Great use of the equipment, but just before the moon crept in, he catches something odd. Folks, if you know anything about how fast the space stations and satellites move across the sky, you know this isn't that. And if I'm not mistaken, it is moving in the wrong direction for a satellite in geosynchronous orbit. I also find it tough to believe two satellites would be this close together as there are clearly at least two objects. And then the kicker. Some of those objects are clearly moving around in relation to one another. I will ask for any assistance or knowledge about what these objects might be. As of now, the flying objects are unidentified. Link to this video is below. In other news, it took five years to understand the mega flashes from a known magnetar. Turns out that what they could detect in addition to the burst of light was seismic waves. A star quake deep down within the neutron mass. Interesting article. You also know all about the Iceland volcano that has been erupting since August 31st. Well, scientists have now discovered that it sits on the single largest and hottest mantle plume or hotspot in the known Atlantic. Top quake of the day hit Greece. Most recorded the rumble around magnitude 5.5. We've eyed this for two days already, and now a cyclone formation alert has been issued as this would be heading west. Anna, still alive in the Pacific, heading north, ready to swing up to the Canadian coastline. The rain is already there, however. These flows have persisted a couple of days and likely won't stop. We've got a major earth spot system with tandem lows in the Alaska Bend and the eastern convergence drawing heat and moisture up the coastline and onto land. Same thing happening at the eastern low right now, pulling hard at its east side while letting cooler air come in from the west. That's how you get this temperature delta of heat at the convergences and cold in the middle. Watch areas tonight in purple with the worst of it sticking north of the border in Canada actually. Same two lows here. The North Atlantic system is now aided by a flow out of the east as well. Meanwhile, the southeastern low continues to churn away. Watch how the clouds form and stick to those systems. It's also how we get our flood and storm alerts there tonight. Down under, you see a couple convergences. I count three across the southern portion of the nation. Not difficult to understand why the clouds pop where they do, nor why the alerts down under seem to follow that wind drive. In today's Fly on the Wall, we'll discuss this current solar uptick, including the lackluster CME action and what that means in our long-term weakening paradigm. Also, a siding spring recap, some thoughts on those UFOs from the eclipse, and a bit on preparedness in these times to come. If you're not yet a member, it is a whole $3 for a month of access, or a whopping $20 for an entire year. We greatly appreciate your support. Helio viewer lagging a bit, so we're at STO and Iris for shots of our star to close. 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.15 a.m. here in Arkansas. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.